Steel, are you, are, you, are you with the bishops? Do they occupy the moral high ground? Uh, well, I think compared to David Cameron they do. See, I think it can look as if David Cameron's in touch with the common people. But if you step back for a moment and see what they're doing here, it's not just a one-off issue, it's not just a one-off cut. This is part of this government's overall strategy, which is to make the poor pay for a mess that the rich have created. That's, <laughs> that's their overall strategy. And of course, the, the people... The, there's only 67,000 households out of you know, the 60 million people in this country who receive this level of benefit. Most of the money goes on rent. That's why over half of the people who receive that much uh, are in London, where the rents are highest. And then, uh, if you just consider for a moment, you know, when it's posed as being fair and posed as being in defence, as Melanie says, of hard-working people, you've got to think to yourself, uh, hang on a minute, if you... In, in some ways, maybe what the government's complaining about is that these people aren't claiming enough. If these claimants weren't claiming £26,000, but were claiming a million pounds and then a million pounds bonus on top of that as well, instead of a cap being put on it, there would just be a mild call for them to show some restraint. If they were having millions of pounds that they were taking uh, out of society, and then they were putting that money in their wife's name and shoving it over to the Cayman Islands so that they didn't pay any tax, then instead of a cap being put on it... Instead of a cap being put on it, then the inland <coughs> revenue would be meeting them, as the inland revenue did meet with many big businessmen just before Christmas, and wrote off in one day £25 billion of tax that was avoided. £25 billion is so much more. And therefore, what's pernicious, I think, about this argument is it's trying to divide all the different people who are being hammered. Because, yes, the working poor are being hammered. And so how pernicious it is to say... Do you know who's taking it? The people who are even poorer than you. This is what they do all the time. Okay. We're going to put up the fees. Uh, all right. we'll, we'll make you pay tuition fees so that, uh, because we're going to protect the working poor. And the danger here is that all the different people that they're hammering are all squabbling amongst themselves about who it is who's taking it, while the rich run off and get away with it. Right. And that's why I think that when you step back from this argument, it looks as if David Cameron is in touch with people, but I really don't think he is. Surely what the bishop was saying, what I heard them saying, was that we should be protecting the children. The children don't decide whether their parents go out to work or whether they stay home and claim benefits. Surely we should be thinking about them and not whether we should be going after these people that we've decided don't deserve money. And, uh, um... <laughs> Jeremy Brown, you're a Liberal Democrat. Paddy Ashton, who used to lead your party, would agree with that lady there and said that this was completely unacceptable. Is he right or wrong? Uh, the, man at the, the man at the very back in the, in the blue shirt. The man at the back there. Yes, you mentioned people in Taunton um, not earning that much, but I wonder how many people claiming benefits in Taunton um, would be receiving this, this top limit, because we know it's London. And it's been talked about that actually lots of people will find it very difficult to get housing, and they'll be crowding um, families into smaller rooms, smaller accommodation, with this cap, um, sort of return to the tenement days, and that's my fear with it. David Lammy, your party is also in favour of a cap on benefits, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, a cap so on benefits. So you're with the government? No, 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 I'm with the bishops. And with the but bishops, they're against the cap. The bishop's job is to scrutinise this policy. That is what they're doing. It's a bad policy. In my constituency, one of the poorest in London, £1,750 a month for a three-bedroom flat. That's two-thirds of the benefit gone just there. We are going to be moving people from inner London to outer London. And I tell you what we're going to get in London. We're going to get something similar to Paris a suburban ring of the very poorest in overcrowded housing that will lead to lots of problems in the years ahead. And of course it's the bishop's job to challenge that. What happens to those children in large families that now find themselves uh, virtually on the streets or in overcrowded, as the gentleman said, tenemented buildings? So which bit of That's the... going to cost all of us which a lot more than the saving which, that the which government bit is going to make. Which you say... The well, hang on. You, you say that your party's... 
You say that your party, and it is the official position of the party, favours the cap as a good idea in principle. Which bit of it do you favour? You seem to have just said you're against it. The cap should be regional. Prices in London are seriously higher than prices in Hull. That's not rocket science. That's obvious. Of course there's got to be a cap because people um, in work should not be receiving less than those out of work and claiming benefit. But you've got to get this right. You've got to get into the detail. This sort of slapdash idea also that people receiving housing benefit are somehow all scroungers is just wrong. Most of the people on housing benefit are there because they can't get employment. They're part of the 2.68 million people in Britain currently unemployed. <laughs> but look, who's going to get the money? Who's getting the money in housing benefit? Slum landlords, on the whole, are getting the money in many parts of this country. So what we need... What we need, and Ken Livingstone is proposing this in the London elections, is rent control. That's what we need. Not private landlords profiteering from the poorest in the country. We need rent control. But I suspect that neither of these two are going to mention rent control. They don't want to regulate the landlords. What they want to do is regulate the poorest people in our country. Do you want to come back on this? Maybe down. Just briefly. I'll just... What the hell is going on with the Labour Party? I mean, you know, in all of this talk about, uh, about the need for austerity and so on, there is one layer of people who have become much wealthier over the last year. The top uh, 1%, or rather the, the, uh, the directors of the top 100 companies in the FTSE index in this country have seen their salaries increase by 49%. It is extraordinary that we have all of this stuff from people who go, what about the working poor? We have, to, we have to attack benefits because of the working poor. And yet they don't bother about this enormous uh, uh, wealth redistribution that goes towards the very, very rich. And that's why I think one of the saddest things, in a way, when I hear David here, he sounds brilliant. I think I'd vote for you, mate. You're full of fire and, <laughs> and everything. And then when it comes to being in the Labour Party, the party as a whole manages to be an organisation that completely uh, uh, refutes its, its whole rationale because the word that it, that, that it is, the institution, is an opposition. And yet it ceased to be an opposition. Instead, it decides to agree with pretty much everything that the government's done, which is why Jeremy there is, <coughs> able to, uh, is to be able to, okay. to poke fun in that way. And I think that's a terrible, terrible shame. I wish, I think, if David and the Labour Party were able to stand up for the great mass of people against this tiny, tiny bunch of very rich people, I think that the, the, the country might be going in a different direction. All right. The, the, the woman there in, in red. Yes, I, I agree with you, Mark. I think that this is a, about an issue of general inequality, growing inequality in, in the world in general. Um, and we're rewarding people for their productivity, for their increase in GDP and the contribution to that. But I think we need to be asking, so what is that GDP actually doing? Because if it's just people accumulating wealth, taking it offshore, you know, how is that actually translating into well-being, which is what economics should be about? And I think as a country we need more of a debate of what do we mean by economic growth and what is it actually doing for the well-being of our people? Um. Thank you. And the man, in, the man in pale blue at the very back there. If David Cameron can tell me as a civil servant that I have to accept less disposable income in 2015 than I had in, 20, in 2009, why can't he pick up the phone to this gentleman and tell him to sort it out? OK. And the man two behind on the very back row, you said? The, the rhetoric from this government and the previous government was that people would only be rewarded for success. The last time I looked, the uh, Royal Bank of Scotland was posting losses... <laughs> They were making thousands of people redundant. Their share is at a penny level. Where is the success in that? Why should he get a bonus for failure? Yeah. And I'll, take, I'll take one more point. 